So, The Handmaiden. The Handmaiden is a 2015 Korean Gothic revenge thriller that's captivated cast based on the novel Fingersmith, written by Sarah Waters and directed by Park Chan Wook, starring Kim Dae-ri, Kim Min Ki, Ha Jun Woo, and Cho Jin Woo. It is set in the period of Japanese occupation in South Korea, and So He, played by Terry, is a pickpocket recruited by a swindler posing as a Japanese gal to help him seduce the lady, lady Hideko, a Japanese heiress who lives a secluded life with her dominary uncle. The film seems like a historical ice film at first, but you can see something happening with the two female characters as they discover some unexpected emotions with their interactions together. Uh, the film premiered at the 2016 Fan Film Festival as it was chosen to compete for the film Dior. It also won Best Film Not in the English Language in the 71st um, British Academy Film Awards, although I think that this film deserves much more awards and recognition as uh, than it received. So for this film, I will talk about the auteur theory. Uh, if you followed Park Chan Wook and his style of violent cinema uh, with main themes of revenge, you'll definitely recognize this film as a film directed with his mind. Uh, despite this being a film based on an already published novel, um, Park Chan Wook made it his um, film with his dark poetry as uh, direction. The scene where he, where the con Con man Kang Fujiwara was tortured with his fingers shown being sliced explicitly uh, shows Chan Wook's colors. His signature can be seen not only on the technical components such as the color grading and cinematography, which is the piece of Wes Anderson, but is emphasized rather on the characters and their narratives and stories. The Handmaiden is definitely an upward driven film, both born from Park Chan Wook's tremendous love for the grotesque. And second, the feminist theory. At more than half of the film, however, Park Chan Wook shows uh, the viewers the unfair treatment of Lady Hideko under her uncle's dominary watch, with having her read and perform what is written on an extremely erotic novels in front of her uncle's rich male friends. And with Count Fujiwara's goal to seduce Lady Hideko only to betray her and lock her in a madhouse. Park Chan Wook first makes us infuriated with these treatments and gives the female leads, the freedom they deserve with the plotless. We see that the two women are the ones actually swindling the men. However, I do find the sex scenes male easy at some point, but I remember Park Chan Wook uh, mentioning in an interview that he asked, in order to make a sex scene, uh, we should ask women how to do those kind of scenes as to not come across uh, as male gizi and uh, and not in any way objectifying women and sex but the ending scene is quite a bit far off from what he intended. Uh, the first half of the ending where we see Soki ruining the library of Lady Hideko's uncle with anger and Hideko just stands there curious-eyed watching Soki and this next scene where they just run in the fields so the genuine happiness and with the subtle lighting of the sun uh, shining on their faces, it made me feel the heartfelt love story between the leads. And finally, the miss on scent of the film is what makes the film a masterpiece. The symbolisms, the costume design, the set design, colors, the film score, the editing, the production values, everything. I can stress enough how much of a masterpiece this film is with all its facets and layers. It's a film where you'll be confused in the middle because Park Chan Wook intends, intends it that way, that his characters not only fool the other characters within the movie, but the viewers, but also us as well, which I found really interesting uh, because misdirection is one signature of Park Chan Wook. And despite me knowing this, uh, the film still spinned me around at every turn. Um, this film really took a twist for the bliss. This is most definitely a one magical piece of work uh, showcasing the love, betrayal, revenge, 
sexual desire and dark humor. And the visuals are really, really good eye for. I'm a princess cut from marble, smoother than a storm. Well, the Hunger Games is the 21st most successful movie franchise of all time. Susan Collins originally wrote the book, while Gary Rose directed the film version, which was released on March 22, 2012. Aside from it being known for its intense war and survivability as the main theme, what I also like about this movie is that when you dig much deeper into its whole concept, you will attain essential information or values that are also relevant to what is happening in our society today. The film is centered around a dystopian nation called Panem, a nation with 12 districts and a capital. The districts make up the lower classes of the nation, while the upper class members and rulers reside in the capital. Annually, the capital sponsors a Hunger Games, a fight to the death which is televised across Panem. This event is a horrible spectacle, employed solely for the pleasure of the residents of the capital. With 24 tributes and only one winner, a boy and a girl from each district are chosen at random as contestants. This process is also known as the reaping. For the most part, it governs the issue about the existing inequality between the proletariat and bourgeoisie in our society. This can be traced back to when people in the capital dress in ways physically to trumpet their high-class lifestyle. Conversely, this is also somehow connected to the Marxist film theory, because the film encouraged the viewers to be politically aware of our society's reality and existing issues. For instance, class division is very evident in the Hunger Games because the possibility of winning is heavily influenced by how powerful the district tributes are to the viewers and how impactful they are to the people of the capital. The capital also has no difficulty watching the poorest people in their country die and perish since witnessing this people's struggle to survive is a pleasure to them. Overall, if you enjoy a suspenseful film, this is the film for you. Aside from being the mind-blowing chase scenes, this movie also serves as a statement on how people in positions of power make her of successive generations. Kewegi박기였음을알려드리고저몇자적습니다이집에히데코아가씨와저는한편을먹기로하였습니다이에고영당식구들의도움이필요하여성금조로물건하나를동봉지카씨좀봐이떡이뭐무엇을해둔전화
겨울이면 훔친 가죽 지갑들을 엮어 외투를 만들었다는 유명한 여도둑의 딸. 저 자신도 도둑, 소매치기, 사기꾼. 내 인생을 망치러 온 나의 구원자. 나의 타마코. 나의 숙기. starting video. Uh, so what can you say about um, uh, the clip of Handmaiden I've shown you? So this is like one of the best movies out there and in the clips that you have shown, my personal favorites are the one in the library and the one where they're running in the field because you can just feel the emotion that they're trying to convey in that particular scene like the one in the library you can just feel the rage and the sadness in that particular scene like if you're really into that scene you might have shed that there's or something like and the one in the field where you can just feel that they're finally free and they have finally gotten the freedom that they have always wanted so first, so I have just finished watching this film and it's honestly one of the best. It's honestly one of the best uh, films out there. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> can So what can you say about the beach? Uh, Hunger Games is definitely uh, a classic movie in our time. I, and what I really like about it is like it's that it's like an epitome of the Marxist theory. Uh, most of the themes and concepts shown in the movie are have been written by Karl Marx in his book, The Communist Manifesto. Uh, especially the clip that you've shown where Katniss Everdeen is having a monologue about the reality of the evil doing of the capital, uh, which shows the protagonist fighting for the needs of her people against the power of capital, and in this film's case, the capital with an O. Uh, 
uh, the core and the essence of the Marxist theory, which is about the war of class struggles, were shown evidently in the film, but in a more fantastical sci-fi approach, which both entertains and enlightens the viewers. Uh, despite it being a commercialized mainstream cinema, it's a political cinema, which is uh, really great because uh, it talks about politics, which is a still a, a hard topic for some to a wide to a wider audience. And uh, the one final thing I'd like to point out in the film which connects to the Marxist theory is that Karl Marx mentioned that it is only when the proletariat starts acting like a group, regardless of their differences, that the current power structure can be challenged, which can be seen from how the districts work together despite not trusting each other at first. And for me, that is uh, the real unity. And this is a very timely film that makes the viewers think about how unfortunate and difficult it is to live uh, in the protagonist worlds in the film, but it also makes uh, the viewers, it makes us think that our current real situation is actually quite similar, which is scary. And um, the political themes and concepts were also introduced to the audience in a, in a way where it is very real and very easy to understand. And because of this, Hunger Games also falls in the category of screen theory, which is actually in relation to the Marxist theory, as the happenings in the film reflect reality in some way and makes the audience think of their own life, of their own reality, based on what, on what they've watched from the movie. And that's all. <laughs>